Hello and welcome back fellow feathered friends. In the last videos I introduced you to some things you can do with C++ and the Godot engine. So today, for the final episode of this tutorial series, I want to show you a pleasant workflow to easily add a GD script and C++ DLLs at the same time in one IDE with help from Visual Studio Code and some extensions. Before we begin, I wanted to send a big thank you to the community, where I got some help with the scans construct file and some settings in Visual Studio Code. So at first you go to my GitHub and into the repositories and look for the C++ template. You can also find the link in the description below. Then you download the Godot C++ project template as zip file. And then you also need a mingw compiler for C++. You can download the mingw compiler right here on SourceForge, or you use the one from CodeBlocks directly from their homepage in Downloads. Then download the binary release. And then down here you already see CodeBlocks mingw setup. So you download and install this exe. I recommend you to install the compiler in a separate folder. Here, for example, with the mingw tool from SourceForge. And here the same from CodeBlocks. And you see here we got some more stuff. But right here in the binary data, we got our compiler. I already installed and extracted all files, so we can start right into the project and create a new folder named Godot. Write it like that, that's very important. It gets created otherwise when you use guns, but more on that later. If you have created your Godot folder, you can create a new project inside. For that you use a normal Godot engine with whatever version, then you simply create a new project in this folder. So if you're ready and in the Godot engine, you go to Editor, Editor Settings, and then to Text Editor External, and you make sure that you got a check mark right here. And as External Editor, you type in your Visual Studio Code.exe since we use Visual Studio Code on our scripts. So now we set up the example scene from last episode, and now we can attach a normal GD script to the node 2D. And now Visual Studio should also start. Inside of Visual Studio, you see that you can add a folder to your workspace, which is where you add the entire project folder in this case, it's the Godot C++ project template master folder. For now, we don't have any auto-completion or marks, which is why we now have to install extensions. You will need Python, C or C++ in this case. And then there are the Godot tools, which you will need for the auto-completion in GD script. So if you're done installing everything, you got stuff like autocorrection in your GD script and your functions get accepted. Then you have to take care that you extend from a kinematic body to D, because only then you can use the move and slide function for the two-dimensional space, which I call up here as an example with the vector of 2020. In Godot, you then have to attach the script onto the kinematic body 2D, and if we debug, you can see that you can program GD script from Visual Studio Code. And now we do the same for C++ files. The project is already pre-configured for that. For that, you go back to your folder where the sconstruct script is located. Those as construct files are pretty normal Python scripts on which you can simply add a .py in Visual Studio. So you also get auto completion or more precisely the 
presentation becomes more clear. And in the S construct, it's also important to correctly enter your directories, which is just the same as in the previous tutorials with Visual Studio. You have to set your library path for the C++ bindings. You also have to set which binding libraries you want to use. Enter all include paths. And then you have to set if you want to build for debug or release. Furthermore, there are in the Visual Studio Code folder. Yeah, now he's complaining. Well, if you are done editing, you can erase the .py so scons can use the file again. So in the .visual studio folder, there's the C slash C++ property JSON. Here you have to enter your includes again and choose your compiler. For that, there is actually a simplified interface. If you press Ctrl, Shift and P and go to C, slash C++ edit configurations UI. You can work on the same settings but with a new UI overlay. And yeah, if you are done with the paths and everything, you can go to the folder where the, where the S construct script is, then start CMD and build your DLL files with scans. Now scans is done and you should find a native folder in your Godot project. And inside the native folder, you now find a gdnative script library for release. And this is only the DLL like from the previous videos. Again, with the source code with which you can use another kinematic body 2D. And yeah, you can easily edit the source code of the DLLs with Visual Studio code. You got also autocorrection through the Godot tools and in Godot, if we implement the library, for example, again with a native script, the player class, a kinematic body 2D, no built in. Here you have the, well, not advantage, but the opportunity to look inside your native scripts and into the scene files, but that's not as interesting. So now we have to tell our native script from which library the files should get obtained. For that you create a new library, add the DLL which we just built in the native folder to the library. So we add this. So we add our library to this GD script. And if we run the whole thing, we see that our control works. And with this method, with the new workflow, you get the opportunity to build games parallel and easy with GDScript and in C++. That way you can use all aspects of the engine and if I would, for example, double the speed in the script, then I would have to build again in Visual Studio Code with run task. You can choose between debug and release. And I choose release here since it's already configured in release. Then again, the new DLL will appear in the native folder and we can debug again. And now the character should be twice as fast. Yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I could help you a little. And yeah, if you want to see more tips or tricks on Godot and experience maybe the wall potential of the Godot engine, I would be happy if you subscribe. And as always, leave your questions, suggestions and comments below. And I hope I see you in the next time. Bye!